In the fall of 2017, Line of Life allowed cameras to follow Dean Robinson, a member of the newly formed outreach team, as he visited homeless camps around the city of Pittsburgh. What you will see is the stark reality of addiction and those working on the front lines of this battle. This homelessness, along with addiction, has changed over the years. There, there's, there's a much younger population of people. I, I've had guys sat, sitting in my office, and i seen the look on their face, and I really do think they wanted to get clean. But it didn't happen that day. The next day, they were gone. Madison Camp will be coming up on your right. That is a heroin camp. And uh, pretty bad. You have your old diehards that just refuse to change their ways. Nobody in the mother or wife or father or son or daughter or no one has ever even tried to help me. Then you have the young guys that are just lost. Yeah, I actually had an apartment and a job, but you know, I messed it up. I got back on drugs. I, I didn't do a lot of heroin until I came up here. I tried heroin for the first time when I first got up here. So, <laughs> you know, I just think about my mom. You know, I'm all the way up here, you know, I got away from my family, and that's the last thing she needs to identify one of her kids. You know what I mean? In a body bag. Oh, you know. How long have you been homeless? Nine years. Nine years. May I ask you for that? Uh, marijuana, alcohol, um, heroin. I have a lot of success on the north side because that was me. I was born and raised here on the north side. Um, I grew up in the house with my mother, my father, and my sister. Um, they had high hopes for me as an athlete. Somehow, some way, I just fell into the wrong path. Uh, I would get home weekends, and you know, then it went to four days a week, and then five days a week, and by then I had to have it to function. The stuff I was doing out on the street, people don't live through that stuff. And, and I really think, I really think I was trying to kill myself. I had to change my way of thinking. I, I had to change the way I do things and, and extend a helping hand to those that need to get back up. I really got into the just a cycle, this is how life is. There was no thought of the future. Pittsburgh's infested with it. It's everywhere. Now you have young guys that are mixing heroin with fentanyl and elephant tranquilizer and all this. They're, they're, you know, you don't know what you're putting in you and it's killing people. I have a lady I've been with for about three years. I love her very much. About a week ago, I did three bags, she did three bags. I woke up, 
moving over to see where Joyce is at, wondering why all the cops is here. And uh, I go over and start to reach for my girlfriend, uh, Joyce, and the officer kept pulling me away from her. She died right here in the, in the tent right here. I feel guilty about losing her. They, I, they, you should have left me dead right along with her. That's how I feel. You should have left me dead right along with her. In 2014, PA reported 36 counties there were overdose deaths due to heroin. One year later, every single county had a heroin death. There's not this hypothetical, okay, it happens in an inner city, it happens in the country, it happens in the sub suburbs. It can happen anywhere. People have an idea like it's a certain age or a certain gender or it's a certain socioeconomic group, but it's not, it's, it's everybody. Angela was always just very unique. We grew up in a very tight-knit family. We were all uh, very loved. She got married, and um, she has two children. Probably about three years ago, she started to have lots of different health issues. Um, she started presenting autoimmune issues, and so she was put on prescription drugs for her pain. There were a few things that we started to notice that were sort of not really making a lot of sense. <laughs> when we would be around her, she would be very up and then very down, you know, nodding off, eyes in the back of her head. She wasn't suddenly able to pay some of her bills. It got to the point where it became very clear to us that she was addicted to these prescription pills. Finally, you know, my mom just said, you have a problem, something's going on, let us help you. While she was in rehab, she met someone that she ended up having a relationship with. At one point, no longer she could she get her prescription pills. And so the guy that she had been seeing, he came home and said, I couldn't get the prescription pills, but I got something better and that's when she used for the first time. She'd never tried heroin in her life. She tried it one time and she was hooked. There were so many people in our family that thought she was going to be okay. And it got to the point where I had to just say, she's never gonna stop. And I feel like I needed to mentally prepare myself for that reality. It's hard for people to understand that there's no way in the head with myself, being clean four and a half years and making a decision to use drugs again. And, and that's the concept of people using against their will. You know, it, it, it is powerful, it's cunning. I was getting ready for youth group. I, I'm in charge of a youth group in Connellsville and I'm in my kitchen and my stepdad shows up. So I open the door and he looks at me and he says, I need to talk to you. You need to get the kids out of the room. And he walked me to the back of the house and all he said was, they found Angela, she's dead. I will tell you, I was very calm because I thought she can't use again and she can't hurt herself again. I felt as though it was like a prison in her mind that she couldn't get out of and she hated herself so much and now she didn't have to hate herself anymore and she didn't have to hate herself for what she did to all of us or to her kids and that it, like she was at peace. This really is a disease. She didn't choose this. She might have chosen to use that first time, but after that, she wasn't in her control. This is a culturally driven disease that is creating a ripple effect of crime, economic depression, socioeconomic despair. This is an epidemic.
there's a struggle, it's huge. It's, it's a big fight. And I feel like at this point, I don't know who's winning the war, but the drugs seem like they're multiplying. It truly is a family disease. Even though one person uses, the entire family is affected. And it's painful. And no one should ever have to tell their, their loved one that they're not ever gonna see their mom again. If we don't come together and attack this disease together, it's gonna to consume us, okay? And, and I'm scared of what this world will come to.